Although there are many forms of transgressive art, I'll be looking specifically at graffiti, as I feel that it's a very contemporary art movement within society, especially in Bristol. Some of the earliest expression of street art were the graffiti on the sides of train carts and walls. This was the work of the gangs in the 1920s and 30s in New York. By the 1970s and 80s, there was a significant turning point in the history of street art. It was a time when young people responded to their socio-political environments and started to create a movement where they took the battle of meaning into their own hands. Essentially an illegal activity, this process of creation through deconstruction began to evolve into several forms of artistic expression. Even though street art is still subversive, it has earned its place within the contemporary art world. It is important con to consider why street art can be transgressive and whether some art needs to be transgressive because of its implied meaning. It is often the indecisiveness of the meaning of the place which allows transgressive activities to happen and therefore artists can impose their own meaning upon such places. Places with indecisive and overlapping meanings are termed heterotopious, the concept coined by Michael Fuku to refer to the sites of otherness where diverse elements that are often polar opposites are joined together to create new meanings and transform spaces. An example of a heterotopious place within Bristol would be the Bear Pit. The Bear Pit is a really interesting space with lots of diversity. In recent years, it's been known as a no-go area and sometimes thought of as dangerous and a bit run down. It is the in-between space of two very different spaces. You have Stokes Croft, which is very socially independent, and Bristol city centre that is very mainstream and capitalist. The space has had various purposes over the years and until 1838, the area was the venue for the annual St James's Fair. Art gives meaning to this transgressive space and can give it a sense of purpose and identity. However, the transgressive nature of the space also gives meaning to the art. It could be argued that certain spaces can allow and encourage transgressive art more than others. Some spaces are more accepting than others. For example, the Bear Pit have boards that regularly get repainted into street art, which reinforces its temporary nature. Therefore, with the constant change of art, it's forever changing the identity of the space, making it very contemporary and relatable to modern society. In an article by Bill Stamens, he conceptualises the term graffiti theory as an underground art movement that faces legal persecutions on a daily basis, where many street artists argue they are not vandals but rather victims of depersonalising social forces. Like a lot of abstract art, graffiti is appreciated by insiders and antagonises outsiders. Merton's subcultural theory argues deviance is the result of individuals conforming to the norms and values of a social group to which they belong, such as street art. If you belong to a social group whose norms differ from those of the mainstream, you become deviant. Tefel and Turner's social identity theory is also relatable to graffiti artists suggesting a person has multiple social identities, therefore street artists are a subculture within society, is an individual-based perception of what finds us associated with any internalised group membership. Graffiti artists do not give their true identity, but create an alternative identity such as Banksy or Sled One. So they're still tagging and claiming their art, but their petty crimes are anonymous, so it's unlikely they are prosecuted. However, the true identity of Banksy has been uncovered, and there have been persisting rumours that the artist is called Robin Gunningham, from Bristol, who had attended the Bristol Cathedral School. It was hard for many of his fans to imagine Banksy, the anti-authoritarian rebel, as a public schoolboy. However, this goes to show that individuals can have multiple social identities. Banksy has sold work to singer Christina Aguilera, who bought three of his art pieces, including a pornographic picture of Queen Victoria with prostitutes for £25,000. Angelina Jolie spent £200,000 on his art in 2006 and one of the art pieces was of a white family having lunch under an umbrella being watched by 15 starving Africans. This went for £120,000. As we can see, Banksy's work and many other art has been commercialised. Banksy's work has generated a lot of coverage in newspapers and online, especially because celebrities are buying his work. It is interesting to see what this coverage of urban artists mean for the street art market. The internet has definitely made street art more accessible, widely viewed and popular. However, some street artists may argue this accessibility has encouraged the over-commercialisation of street art. This popularity can lead to the street art community being robbed of their outsider identity that the medium creates. Street art is loved for its creativity and originality of going against society's norms. However, this can be damaged due to street art becoming mainstream. 
Marxist theorists argue today's culture of consumerism and hyperconsumptions is tied up with the pursuit of maximization of profit. This is supported by the fact that street, art street artists are selling their work. Others are able to reproduce and sell their artwork, for example, famous street art merchandise. And with legality being a grey area, street artists cannot claim their work and stop this happening. On the other hand, the use of internet has its benefits and enables street artists to display their work to a wider audience and receive recognition as a street artist and for their transgressive art. Is it the illegal act of graffitiing within the public eye that makes the art transgressive, or is it the meaning placed behind the art? For example, street art is often used to express worldly concerns of the artist, therefore it can be very controversial. Unlike a gallery, where people enter and view the art through their choice, street art is placed in the view of all to see, and that is why it can be very controversial, because it is looking for a reaction from the audience. You may have noticed in Stokes Croft, The Breakdancing Jesus, it was painted by Cosmo Sarsen beside the canteen. The 8.5 art piece is unconventional and its meaning can be debated. It could be seen as a modern take on religion and appeal to a wide audience. I'm very fond of this piece and think it's a great example of modern day street art because it's capturing the attention of the Bristol community and can be interpreted differently by different people altering its meaning. Consequently, others could see the piece as insensitive and intended to make light out of Christianity. A 73-year-old in Filton commissioned a local street artist to create a 30-foot mural on the end of his house. The mural shows David Cameron with his hands around a nurse's throat. It was designed to encourage the public to vote Labour, however the resident was told to remove the mural and if not he would face legal action. In this case, and many others, the motivation to artistically intervene in the community is to make a rebellious message with a strong social critique. I spoke to a street artist and I was curious to find out what he had to say about his experience of graffitiing around Bristol. It is its own culture and as a subculture, it's kind of one of the strongest ones that I see that's going. I think because it's kind of like born of kind of like anti-establishment and anti-authoritarian sort of characters and stuff, it's kind of definitely against the grain in that sense. Yeah, I guess so. I don't really get into the mindset of I'd say the reason that graffiti artists write their name really is it could be to do with like a story behind it, but most of the time it's because the letters look good and it's, it's, more, it's more of the aesthetics with how a piece is actually built up. And most of the time like letters and like my identity is kind of built up off just the shapes of it really, it's not really anything, it, like I'd like to have a deeper meaning. I let like the audience kind of make their own mind up about it kind of thing. But um, with my recent work, I started doing a lot of stuff with uh, like force perspectives and kinetic art. So it's basically kinetic art. It's like yeah, it, it depends on the viewer to see the image from one vantage point. Otherwise, it just doesn't work. Like the the, the image just de deconstructs and turns into like fragments. <laughs> A whole room as a canvas is so much more like interesting to me at the moment. So, sort of stepping away from trying to make a narrative and forcing a narrative on stuff, it's just sort of a bit more like ambiguous, I guess. It's in the subculture of the people who are seeing it. So the people, the other people who are seeing it, uh, people who I take taking it out of that and then putting it in a gallery is kind of it changes the meaning completely but with graffiti it's such a it's like a dialogue between whoever is around it and even like the public there's a massive community of like train writers which is people who yeah, paint trains and stuff so that's like a load of people just go and do the most dodgy spots that they can find and 
least that's why they do it, it's for the adrenaline. What I like to do is uh, steer, not steer clear of it, I like to go painting illegal spots now and again, or quite calm illegal spots, like places that are abandoned buildings and stuff that where you're not really going to get hassled, and if you do, it's, it's not too bad. No, not at all. As far as graffiti goes, it's like, graffiti's should, if the council is saying you can paint here, uh, or whatever, it's like, I don't want to just be able to paint where I'm, where I'm allowed to paint, I want to paint where I want to paint. You know, to say that it, it is legal just puts another barrier on it, to be totally honest. In conclusion, there are many causes of street art to be transgressive. It would include the space that the artist decides to create their art piece, as some spaces are more transgressive than others. Therefore, the art meaning will be influenced by the surrounding area. Graffiti artists can be seen as transgressive because they're hiding their true identity because of the illegal nature of painting in public spaces. It could be argued that transgressive characteristics of street art make it what it is. It is a way of an individual to express themselves without others knowing who they are and this gives the individual the opportunity to make bold statements to the rest of the community. Much of street art is therefore very controversial because it's based on individuality and opinions which are to be seen as going against society's norms.